Hello, Esther. Hi. How can I help? Tell me a joke. What did the Indian cheese say to the other cheese? Two cheese body, high mast, mast. That's a good one. MG Motor India or Morris Garages India is on a roll when it comes to technology. The new MG Aster is India's first SUV with personal AI or artificial intelligence assistant and first in segment autonomous level 2 technology. In this video we talk about the latter. What do these levels mean? Here there is partial driving automation and the car has something called advanced driver assistance systems or EDAS. The vehicle can control both steering and accelerating or decelerating. Let's tell you about adaptive cruise control first. ACC detects vehicles with help of a camera and radar sensors. To engage this function, you need to pull the yaw stick towards yourself. On the instrument cluster, you get the message MG Pilot on. The instrument cluster turns yellow. The condition to activate ACC is that you need a minimum speed of 30 km per hour. Press the set button for the desired speed for cruising. When ACC is activated, the indication on the instrument cluster turns green. As you move the lever upwards once or downwards once, the target speed will change by plus 5 km or minus 5 km per hour accordingly. But if you continuously hold the lever upwards or downwards, the speed will increase or decrease in 1 km per hour increments. All you have to do is to release the lever when the target speed is achieved. Let's assume your target speed is 80 km per hour. Then while cruising at 80 km per hour, it detects a car in front and the latter reduces its speed below 80 km per hour. The ACC gets to work and reduces your car speed and as the car in front picks up speed, your car too speeds up and if the car in front speeds up beyond 80 km per hour, your car maintains the 80 km per hour speed as set by you for cruising. ACC can also maintain time to collision with the vehicle ahead by rotating the switch. To adjust the distance, you can toggle between three distance settings, 1 second, 1.4 seconds and 1.8 seconds. Also interestingly, if the vehicle in front comes to a standstill and moves forward within three seconds, then your vehicle automatically starts and follows. And in case it takes more than three seconds, your car remains stationary. But if you move the ACC lever switch to resume position or lightly step on the accelerator pedal, you can resume following the car. Now this is adaptive cruise control of an advanced nature. Do you agree? Now let us come to blind spot detection. There are different kinds of blind spots. All these fall under rear drive assist functions that can be selected from the infotainment screen under the driving assistant head. You just have to shift this function as well as the blind spot detection function to the on position on the touch screen. BSD is enabled. The system monitors both the left and right of the vehicle. Your vehicle speed should be about 30 km per hour. If there is a vehicle in the blind zone of your vehicle, a warning lamp glows on the corresponding ORVM and this will glow continuously till the vehicle passes by. Now this function is ideal when you drive at night. That's the time you are not very sure of the object on your ORVM or outside rear view mirror. Now coming to lane change assist or LCA which is also part of rear drive assist. Here you need to touch the on position on the screen for lane change assist. 
the function starts monitoring 70 meters behind your vehicle. Again, the vehicle has to be about 30 kilometers per hour speed. Now, if a vehicle from behind is approaching your vehicle at a speed which is faster than your vehicle and you intend to change your lane with a turn indicator, then the approaching vehicle, if it enters the detection area of the corresponding rear radar, warning lights come on the respective ORVM. This makes a lot of sense as we really do not get to see speeding vehicles approaching our car on a highway. Another function is the Rear Cross Traffic Alert or RCTA. First and foremost, it needs to be enabled on the touch screen. Now think of a situation where you're backing your vehicle at a speed less than 10 km per hour and the speed of the other vehicle that is being monitored is about 10 km per hour. Keep in mind that the radars of the rear can monitor up to 5 meters behind your vehicle and as much as 40 meters from the side of the vehicle. You will get a warning on the screen and also on the respective ORVM. Do remember that both the BSD and the LCA are activated in the Aster after it crosses 30 km per hour. And RCTA works only if your vehicle is less than 10 km per hour and the speed of the vehicle that is being monitored is more than 10 km per hour. As part of ADAS, it's time to move on to Lane Assist modes. These can be selected from the infotainment screen. Here again, you can select modes like high, medium, and low. When LDW is activated, a yellow illumination will be displayed on the instrument cluster. When your vehicle gets past the 60 km per hour speed, it becomes green, indicating that the LDW is active. For this feature to function properly, you need to have marked lines on the road. The car has to detect these lanes. Once these are detected, it reflects on the MID or the multi-information display in the instrument cluster. Now, if you are to move to the next lane without any indicator, a visual warning will be given to the instrument cluster with red illumination along with acoustic and haptic warning. Since haptic involves touch and motion stimulated with technology, here in this case, when the vehicle strays to the left or to the right, the steering wheel vibrates and passes on a tactile alert to the driver. As for lane departure prevention, this is even better once activated. Here, when the vehicle tends to depart from the original lane without any indicator, the system will aid applying corrective steering intervention. There will also be a warning on the MID screen. The next level is the lane keep assist. Once you activate this function, it's like the ultimate lane discipline. LKA will always maintain the vehicle position in center of the lane by using corrective steering intervention. In the absence of steering input from the driver for 20 seconds or more, the system will display warning. If still no response from the driver, the system will turn off. Remember, the lane functions get activated only after the vehicle crosses 60 km per hour speed. They work between 60 to 180 km per hour and the most important thing is that these functions will not work if there are no lanes or there are poor markings on the road. In India, that could be a challenge. Finally, let's come to Speed Assist System. I think Speed Assist System is very, very practical. The car can warn you for speed warning. Within the Speed Assist System feature on the touchscreen, you need to touch on speed warning. 
The Advanced Driver Assistance System or ADAS camera of the vehicle detects a speed limit sign and the same speed is displayed on the instrument cluster. Now, if the vehicle were to exceed the speed limit, a visual warning will flash on the instrument cluster. Now, if you were to activate the manual mode under the speed assist system, then you can move the control lever up or down to adjust the speed limit. Press the set button after the desired speed limit value is displayed. The system will actively intervene and keep the vehicle speed within the speed limit set by you. Manual mode works at minimum speeds of 30 km per hour. In the intelligent mode under speed assist system or SAS or SAS, once you activate it, when the vehicle passes a speed limit sign, for example, it shows 70 km per hour on the signboard on the road and the vehicle is traveling at 70 or more, it will automatically bring down the speed just a notch below 70 km per hour. The speed limit indication displays the real-time speed limit value on the MID screen. Whenever the speed limit changes to a lower speed limit, the car will automatically decrease its speed. And if the speed limit changes to a higher speed limit, you will have to use the accelerator pedal to increase the speed. The intelligent mode will detect minimum speed limit sign of 40 km per hour. And also keep in mind, the speed assist system, manual mode and intelligent mode do not work along with adaptive cruise control and do not engage braking functionality. Hard acceleration can override manual mode and intelligent mode. SAS may also not work if the speed limit signs are incorrectly placed or damaged.